Jeff Chang is one of America's leading historians and cultural critics, the author of Can't Stop, Won't Stop, a hit history of hip hop. He's the author most recently of Who We Be, The Colorization of America. I had a chance to catch up with him this summer in New York, not so long after the Charleston shootings. In a lot of ways, a lot of things have changed in this country for racial equality and, and cultural equity. I mean, we can, we can watch Empire and Blackish and Fresh Off the Boat now on weekdays in prime time. Um, and uh, certainly musically, um, mainstream culture, all of that kind of stuff, uh, we see sort of this happy rainbow country. But at the same time, the regime sort of, of colorblindness what I mean by that is, is the refusal of folks in the U.S. to see what it is that we are doing around race um, recreates these structures of segregation, um, recreates these structures of inequality. Our refusal to see these things has uh, created a situation in which by all social indices, you know, the gaps are opening on income, on wealth, on educational attainment, on housing. Um, people talk a lot about gentrification um, and at the same time um, what we see is these flashpoints are happening in these suburban areas uh, of these big cities. Um, well actually gentrification is part of the same larger resegregation process that produces a Ferguson, that produces a Sanford, uh, Florida, that produces uh, West Baltimore, right? and. Um, and yet we refuse to see these things. The book was really looking at, uh, literally, um, visual culture over the last 50 years and how artists have tried to uh, raise these questions uh, from the 60s all the way up till now. Um, and what's been really interesting is to see the rise now of these social movements that are literally about transforming the way that we see each other. Uh, understanding that racial profiling um, and the stereotypes and the kinds of things, these kinds of ways that prevent us from seeing each other's full humanity um, are what is triggering, uh, continuing to trigger uh, these, these sparks, these flashpoints, these events, um, uh, these killings, um, these assaults, this violence uh, that the Black Lives Matter movement has, has uh, sprung up to call attention to and, and to move us towards um, transforming. One of the things that I find really exciting about the Black Lives Matter movement is it's not just about uh, this sort of dichotomy of, 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 um, of blindness and, and seeing that is just about um, uh, transforming what, what's happening in the media, for instance, right? Um, it's about seeing the whole diversity of black lives. And what I think Black Lives Matter, uh, what folks in Black Lives Matter uh, argue is that if we can see the diversity of black lives uh, and why they matter, then we can see why all lives uh, matter. We're in this weird kind of moment now where everybody's kind of looking for diversity. Diversity is kind of a fad right now. Um, and I think that that provides openings for folks to be able to find their way in. We've already seen artists like Kendrick Lamar, like D'Angelo, like Kamasi Washington, um, being able to, to step into that space and be able to articulate um, what even two or three years ago might have been really radical, two radical messages um, for, for the marketplace. Culture is implicated in, in capitalism um, intimately in, in both the sort of ideological form that Nancy Leon calls racial capitalism um, as well as actual factual capitalism. Cultures really uh, always had to figure out, people working in the culture of always, I think, had to figure out where you want to align yourself in relationship to that. Um, and, you know, Art's, art's not easy, and art needs funding, and we all need patrons, and, and you know, and so it's the kind of thing where um, uh, the economies, uh, the questions of the economies of, of the arts are, are, uh, are always before us.